Let's talk about how to become debt free quickly and more specifically, how I paid off my debt in two years, y'all. I had over $80,000 in debt between student loans, credit cards, my car note, like I had, I just wasn't together. So if you can relate to this and you've been serious about becoming debt free quickly, you know, and paying off whatever kind of loans you have, then you have landed on the right video because I'm gonna give you five things that helped me along my journey. Um, and hopefully they inspire you to get started and tackle your debt as well. So before I get into it, hey girl, hey, or hey boy, hey, because uh, there are some guys that watch my channel. My name is Jocelyn and I'm the founder of Maximize Money where I teach corporate women um, how to create their dream lives with their nine to five incomes. And so paying off your debt is a big part of that because it opens the door to more money essentially. And so I'm gonna give you those five tips, so let's just get into it. The number one thing that truly helped me to become debt free quickly and helped me, you know, pay off my debt in two years is to make a decision to actually do it. A lot of times we talk about it from year to year, quarter to quarter, month to month, and we never make any changes to our lifestyles. And you have to, you have to make some changes to your lifestyle to make this happen. I'm not saying you have to restrict yourself and live on oodles and noodles, but like for me, the wake up call happened when it was time for me to move into my own place. Like I couldn't even afford to live on my own, number one. And two, like I was trying to buy a house and I realized that my debt, despite having like a pretty okay paying job, like I was paying the minimum on my debt. Like I was really doing the bare minimum with my finances and that ultimately bit me in the butt when it was time for me to number one, attempt to apply apply for an apartment on my own. I couldn't get one. I had a roommate at that time. And two, foolishly try to buy a house. And like my lender at the time was like, girl, he didn't say girl, but he was like, no. <laughs> he was like, I need you to take some time to like get your money right, like pay down some of your debt, increase your savings. Like I wouldn't even feel comfortable giving you a loan with your financial situation. And if I gave you one, it would be a high interest rate. Like you would end up having to pay more just to get the house versus someone who has a better financial blueprint to get a house, you know? And so I'm like, okay, that, like, that sucks. I, that means, I mean, where do I go live now? Because at that point, the roommate that I had at the time, like she was moving to some other place. I think she was moving with her partner or something like that. And so ultimately we were having to leave the apartment because I couldn't afford it on my own. And so I had to make a decision like I could have just decided to like go get another roommate and 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 figure it out, but I was like, no, like I'm about to be 30. Like I cannot be living my life hopping from place to place like a homeless woman because I was spending my money on all other type of things. Happy hours, brunches, I was traveling, I was going to New York every other weekend, I was going to Atlanta, I was going to Jamaica, Barbados, like I just couldn't continue on that hamster wheel of like you make pretty okay money. I think I was making like 67,000 at the time. Like, and I lived in the DMV area, which is DC, Maryland, Virginia, in the Maryland side. And I thought I was doing okay, but no baby, you was not doing okay. And I liked my job at the time. Like it was nothing against the job. I just felt like the next step ideally would be to get, get to live on my own. I'm about to be 30. Why we put these internal checkpoints in our lives? I don't know, but that was a decision. Like. And God, like, as the midst of all of this happening, because I still ended up going out looking for homes and everything, but God, like, was blocking it. And God was like, girl, you know what I told you to do. Because God be speaking to me. And I was reading this book called Destiny by T.D. Jakes at the time. And it was just so loud. The words were so loud. And, and God was so loud. And he was like, I need you to get your life together. I need you to get your money together. And so, like, he had been pulling me to essentially, like, just take a break from the whole process and get your affairs in order so you can come back when I feel like you're ready stronger, you know, have a better financial report card, if you will. So I made the decision to just take a break and I moved back home with my mom, um, which was very rough. After living on your own for so long, it was rough to get back to rules and regulations under somebody else's roof but we made it work and obviously it was helpful to be able to you know reconnect with my family after you know living on my own for so long and and it was necessary essentially and so a lot of us i know you may not be able to make that kind of a drastic decision to go back to your parents house but if you have a sibling if you have a cousin like if somebody owns a home and they have extra rooms like 
just minimizing your expenses and making the decision to do that is gonna help you free up more money to do the things that you need to do because that's what I had to do. Like if I would have just moved into another apartment, a lot of my money still would have been going to my living expenses. And to be clear, majority of my money now goes to my living expenses. However, the debt is no longer an issue. And so when it was time for me to buy my home, I got a higher um, pre-approval amount and my interest rate was much lower because I looked like a favorable borrower because I had my money together. I had paid off the debt. I had increased my savings. I did what I needed to do. So you gotta be willing to do what you need to do to get to where you wanna be, but the first step is actually making a decision, okay? The second thing you need to do, if you wanna learn how to become debt-free quickly, the thing that I did, you know, what I had to do, you know, and how I paid off my debt in two years was to look at my numbers. And when I say look at my numbers, I mean I had to look at all the debt that I owed. So I had to pull out, you know, I made a, a, a Excel sheet, baby, like I didn't do much, but I made an Excel sheet of all the loans that I had across my car, across my um, student loans, across a little bit of credit card debt that I had, and I listed everything. The minimum payment, I listed the interest rate associated, and I listed how much I had left. And then I had to like look and see, okay, which one of these is costing me the most money? Because there are two ways to tackle your debt. There's the debt, aval av debt avalanche method and the debt snowball method. The debt snowball method is better for people that want to see small wins really quickly. I have a video coming out on that. So go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe, baby, because I'm going to break it down for you. But that's for people who want quick wins. Like, you want to pay it off quickly, starting with the smaller amounts versus debt avalanche, which is what I did, which is where you tackle the, 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 the debt that has the highest interest rate. So for me at the time, those were my private loans, and so I tackled those first. And then once they're done, that means that my balance dropped drastically because I was paying so much in interest plus the principal to those loans and so look at all your numbers and decide which one of those routes you want to know if you don't know which route that's fine go ahead like comment and subscribe because I'm gonna break down a video where I talk about the pros and the cons of both sides of it that snowball snowball versus that avalanche but looking at your numbers and I know for me like I had never taken that time and that was something my lender inspired me to do he was like you need to know what's going on with your money because if you don't, you're going to get in the house and you're going to end up having to sell it or for, go into foreclosure because you're not even being a good steward over what you have now. He didn't say those words. He said it much nicer, but that was the gist of it, okay? So just rip the Band-Aid off. And it's hard. Like, I know it's hard and I'm empathizing with you if you've never done that because I didn't know what was going on. I was just literally logging into Sally Mae because that's what it was back then. And I was just paying the bare minimum, you know, but the bare minimum gets you nowhere. You still end up owing more over time by not looking to tackle it. And I know that there's a lot going on with student loans and public, you know, service being able to forgive some of them. But what you don't know is that's only for public service loans, which are the federal loans, not the private loans. So if you have both, either way, they can impact you. So I don't want you to put them off, essentially, is what I'm saying. So take a deep breath. Pour a glass of wine or make some tea if you don't drink and just log in and see what's going on with the money that you have that you owe so that you can at least make a plan because that is point three. You know, how I paid off my debt in two years and how to become debt free is to set a goal. So as you look at those numbers, you'll start to recognize, okay, this is, I owe $20,000 on this loan and the interest rate is 15%. This is out of hand. I need to focus on that one first, you know? So like the way you think about it is gonna be unique to you. But for me, again, I tackled that high interest debt first because I knew that when I knocked that off, the amount that I owe would decrease drastically and I can tackle the things with the lower interest rates next. So set a goal and make it smart. I'm a smart girls kind of girl, okay? And I work in marketing. So if you don't know what smart is, it's specific, which means that it needs to be specific. I want to pay off $20,000. needs to be measurable by 2026 of December. It needs to be attainable. So you need to look at what your budget is, what your spending plan, like what is what, what money is coming in and what money is going out. And if you need a tool for that, download my free spending plan template, which is linked in the description, where I allow you essentially to plug in all your numbers in less than an hour. I did all the work for you. All you have to do is put in your actual numbers and adjust it to your lifestyle so that you know what's coming in, what's going out, and how you can reach this goal with the money that you already have. Because I don't want you to feel like you have to go get another job if you don't want to. I don't want you to feel like you have to go get a side gig if you don't want to. I personally had three jobs at the time. I do not recommend that. <laughs> but if you want to go get a temporary job in the meantime, I'm not going to tell you not to. However, but for me, 
I, I never want to have multiple jobs at the same time ever again. That was just, I, all I did was work. I was a worker. I was a hamster, essentially. Never got off that wheel. Um, so yeah, set a goal and make it smart. Specific, measurable, attainable, realistic for your lifestyle, for your money that's coming in. Or unless you want to get another job, you know, then you have a little more income to work with, but you have to think about the tax implications of that because the IRS going to want to cut it out as well, okay? So that's why I'm, I'm not a big fan of side gigs or side jobs because a lot of people do have that, especially remote workers these days, but the government is taking a lot of that money. So it's like, can you manage it with the income that you already have? A lot of us can, we just need to cut back on these thousand dollar nail, $180 manicures, bust downs every month, you know, trip after trip after trip. Like your life's gonna have to change a little. And it's not to say you can't do those things, but you're gonna have to supplement it with other stuff you know maybe do your hair at home every other month maybe do your nails every other week like you just got to be willing to make changes which leads me to point four how i paid off my debt in two years and how to become debt free quickly is to make changes for me when i got serious about paying off debt that's when i knew that i had to make some lifestyle changes so for me the biggest thing that i stopped doing was going to happy hour all the time now granted I stopped going to happy hour all the time. <laughs> I still went, but I'm gonna tell you how I went in step five. Um, but I started doing my own nails at home. My cousin is a beautician, an uh, unofficial one. She's a family beautician, okay? So I stopped getting like braids, you know, and I had her introduce me to crochet. And crochet is quicker and it's cheaper and it was just easier to maintain. I got to use the same hair over and over that she put in because you can wash it. Essentially, it's like a, 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 a wig, but you can have curly hair. This is crochet. Um, or you can have braids. Like, I have videos on my feed, um, on my on my other videos that I have. Where anything you see with braids, essentially, with the exception of those long ones that I have back in 2022, those are all crochet braids. Like, I'm all about working smarter, not harder, because that's hair I can use over and over and over. So, like, you gotta be willing to make changes to your life. So uh, that was a big change because I was getting my hair done fairly often because I was in the streets fairly often, but I was at home a lot more I, or I was working, okay? I didn't need to be cute for nobody. I did the bare minimum when it came to the beauty regimen when I was serious about paying off my debt. And then two is I stopped traveling as much. I love traveling, like for me, now that my debt is gone and it has been gone for years now, like I'm back to my traveling on the regular, but now I can actually afford it because that big expense is behind me. The home that I wanted, I now have, like I'm just in a better place, but if I wouldn't have paid off that debt, I would not be living, and I'm not fully comfortable. I still make financial, even as a certified financial educator, I'm not perfect. So I always am honest with my clients about that, like, I have weeks and months where I overspend still, you know, but I, at least I make a plan to get back to living below my means. And for the most part, I do live below my means, but I do have the moments where I do not, okay? So I'm not telling you to seek perfection. I'm just telling you to find what works for you and make changes that make sense for you. If you spend a lot on beauty maintenance, maybe learn how to do some stuff at home. Now I do my own nails at home. I do my hair, I did my hair, I did my nails. Um, but if I'm going on a trip, or if it's my birthday, or if it's a special occasion, baby, I'm getting the things done, okay? But for the most part, I be here. So I don't I don't need to do the most. For who? Who? Who do I need to do the most for? <laughs> Nobody. So you gotta be willing to make changes. So think about what you spend a lot of money on, it, whether it's brunch, happy hour, beauty maintenance, Amazon, you know, emotional purchases. Comment what you, um, what kind of changes you feel like you want to make and where you find that you spend the most money, where you likely are going to have to cut back. And I can share with some, share some resources with you um, if I find them relevant to what, what you want to cut back on. So yeah, comment below. Um, let me know what you tend to spend the most on that is sort of like a personal enjoyment, if you will. And again, I'll give you some tips to, you know, decrease those costs or find other ways to have them covered. So that's point four, right? Yeah. And then the fifth thing um, that'll help if, you know, the fifth thing that helped me and in, in how I paid off my debt in two years and how to ultimately become debt free quickly. Sorry, y'all, I feel like I got a burp. It ain't coming out. I'm gonna read, say that. Okay, and the fifth thing around how I paid off my debt in two years and how to become debt free quickly 
is to divide your money up and give your money a responsibility. So I already told y'all we have this, I have a free nine to five spending plan template linked in the description. Um, but it's time to start assigning your, you're assigning your money with that, but like you got to take it a step further. That's what I did. And I got this tip from the budgetista, Tiffany the budgetista. Um, maybe one day she'll see this video. But anyway, I was, I was consuming a lot of her content because she had also paid off a lot of debt. Um, as well as Wealth Noir. He was like my investor hat because I knew that, you know, after I paid off this debt, I needed to start investing because I wasn't really investing for real. Like I was investing for play play. I had a 401k, 401k, 401k account through my job and that was it, you know, but like I knew that I could be doing better. Um, so one tip that she gave was to, you know, divide your money up based on what your priorities were. And for me, um, she had many accounts, but I'll just tell you about three that I had. One was a bills account, so that was checking. That was where my, my um, check went in. I paid all the bills that I had. I didn't have many bills. God is good because I had moved back in with my mom. I just had to pay her rent, but it was much lower than what I would have to pay anybody else, um, as well as just other stuff, you know, that I had like my uh, groceries and my, um, car note and obviously the student loans, the, the credit card loans, all the things. So all things adulting went in that one account. I had another account for my savings. Now I didn't save a lot on when I was paying off my debt because I didn't have a need to save and I just didn't have enough money at the time. Like making $67,000, you know, that wasn't much. <laughs> so I just didn't have a lot to save. But I did want to just, I started getting in the habit of saving a little bit. Like, I think I would put maybe like a hundred or something in there. Like, it wasn't much the way that I'm saving aggressively now. Like, I'm looking to save a year's worth of my expenses and I'm, I'm halfway there. But that took me years. So this is going to take me years to get a whole year, but I'm, I'm committed to the, to the journey. Um, but I didn't have a need for savings a lot of savings because I feel like you need a, a you need a need for savings because if my car broke down then I would have needed a new car you know or probably not I would have figured it out family I, my family would have helped me figure it out but because I had to anyway that ain't even relevant to the story essentially my livelihood was attached to my mom at that moment if I would have been living on my own still I would have been struggling on what to do but I have a video on that I have a video coming out next week on um, what, how you how you should prioritize uh, paying off debt versus saving. I'm gonna give you some things to consider. So go ahead again and like, comment, and subscribe if you wanna if you wanna be alerted on when that comes out because that is a common challenge a lot of us have, especially if we don't live at home or we don't or we're responsible for our livelihood. So go ahead, like, comment, and subscribe. I'll have that video posted next week. Um, but yeah, I had a bill for my, I had a, three accounts primarily. One was my bills, like I said, so that's all things debt pay off, you know, gra gas, groceries, still the stuff that I need to, to live on a day to day basis. And then I had another one for fun money. So I still wanted to enjoy my life, but I didn't want to put a lot of money towards enjoying my life the way that I did in DC in, in Maryland. So, um, I decided to, you know, create a fun money account and this was separate than, from my bill money account. So all of my money will go into my checking and then I'd move a small portion over. That's how I started. Cause eventually I just made the adjustments within my employer's kind of portal. And then I had $200 from every check going to the fund money. So in total, cause I got paid twice a month, I um, had $400 of fun baby. And that wasn't a lot. But I was still able to do some happy hours. I was able to do maybe a brunch. I was able to go do a little paint sip. It wasn't much. And when it ran out, it ran out, you know? And, and my friends and my family knew this and they understood. So sometimes if they knew that I didn't have the money, they would just spot me, you know? And now that I'm in a better place, you know, they can come whenever I can spot them, you know? Like, but I got super clear about that. And then the third one, as I mentioned, was my savings account because I knew that I wanted, wanted to start investing, you know? And so I was saving because I knew what the end goal was, which was to buy the house, you know, which was to start investing. And then eventually I did add an investment account towards the end of my debt payoff journey. Um, and that was um, through Fundrise. And I have tons of videos about my experience with Fundrise. Essentially it's investing in real estate the same way you would invest in like a Google, Facebook, like you own a portion of it 
a portion of real estate through shares and stocks. So I have tons of videos on that. If you're interested in it, comment below. Um, but those were essentially the five ways that I followed that helped me pay off my debt in two years. Again, I had over $80,000 in student loan debt. Um, and one thing that I'm gonna start doing moving forward for those of you who download the free nine to five spending plan template is I'm gonna start doing spending plan reviews because a lot of people feel like, well, where am I gonna get the money to pay off the debt? Where am I gonna get the money to do this? How can I cut back? How can I increase my income? I'm gonna show you live and in color for free on my YouTube channel because I am working on a uh, debt pr payoff program, but that won't be available until next year because I'm still praying on a lot of things and just ensuring that God is ahead of me and I'm not ahead of him. But in the meantime, I wanna help people get their money right so that they can start paying off debt and show you where you can cut back or where you can increase in certain areas. So I'll be doing those live on YouTube. It'll be anonymous. I won't say your name or anything. Like I'll probably give you an alias, um, which is a fake name. And then we'll just review together. So the way that you're watching this video, you'll be able to watch me actually going through someone's spending plan and helping them make room for the things that they want to do, whether that's saving more, paying off debt, which is something I get a lot of questions around. I've helped a lot of my clients do it. Um, so yeah, like until the program is formalized, I'll continue to do those free spending plan reviews. So once you download the free spending plan template, there will be a link for you to submit it. Um, and then again, I'll highlight your plan live on my channel and I'll walk you through some things that I recommend you do if I were in your position, but ultimately it's up to you to, to make the changes. So again, that's free and you'll get it only if you download the free spending plan template. And again, that'll add you automatically to the list to my debt program, my debt payoff program, which will be uh, launching next year, okay? Likely in January. So um, hold me accountable and comment below if you have any questions. Uh, comments or you know challenges and please like comment and subscribe y'all I'm trying to hit 1k by the end of this year December 2024 and I want to monetize my channel um, so if you find this helpful please share it with other friends family again I have so many other debt payoff videos tons of saving videos coming investing all the things and this is for my corporate baddies okay my nine to five earning women because I too have a nine to five I don't judge anybody a lot of people try to tell you that you can't you can't do much with a nine to five actually you can and when you learn from me and I show you how to create your dream life, you're going to be happy. Okay? So thank you so much for watching. Again, please like, comment, and subscribe, y'all. Trying to get to 1K by the end of the year. Trying to monetize. I'm halfway. I'm, I'm about 200, 195 away from 1,000. And then I'm halfway to my monetization goal from a watch time perspective. So watch everything. Okay? Help your girl out. I'm not paying. Y'all ain't paying me to do this. This is free. Now my client's gonna have to pay, but this is free. I'm here to help y'all. So help me help you, okay? Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video. Peace.